What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. Chilling out in Mission Control, working on some pinball videos. But I just got a control panel in from a customer. He needs some help. Cowabunga, let's kick shell, pizza power. So I never usually do builds inside the Mission Control, my basement and all that, but uh, I got a couple of videos coming up with virtual pinball. I just put the surround sound feedback on that, so I'll make a video on that later on. But I uh, had a very good, um, actually, returning customer named Rob. He hit me up on Instagram saying, hey, Vic, I have this control panel. It's actually sitting in my closet. Can you hook it up? Can you help me out and get it back to working order? So on this one, we're going to fix this control panel. Uh, so we had a couple of requests real quick. The big thing um, he really needed some help with was uh, cleaning up the wiring. Um, it is a game room solutions cabinet um, Very familiar with this. So this is a breeze for me um, I believe he told me that the image he, he bought everything like the guts package So he has like the raspberry pi and all that but um, he misplaced the SD card um, So we have to get him a new SD card and his big Request was to clean up the wiring here. So again, it's a-okay People are trying to you know, just get into the gaming scene and the hobby of it I'll be able to clean all this up 100%. I always, anytime I get somebody's build, I always take all these wires out. Yes, it is a little bit of a headache. Yes, it is a lot of work, but this just has to be done. You have to clean up the wiring and stuff. So here's one request. He wants to clean up the wiring. I'll get that done. So on this one, basically, again, he already bought the cabinet. Um, pretty cool artwork. I think he said that he just submitted the image and then Ryan basically put it on. So that's awesome. Um, no basically stuff here indicating like, you know, player one, player two. I might have um, in the shop or if anything tomorrow, I'll print it out, but I might be able to put the printouts here for him before I give it to him. This way he has at least a little bit of stuff to look at on that. So again, pretty basic stuff. It looks like he is running Sanwa sticks, so it's pretty good that he got the Sanwas on it. Um, again, though, 100% big thing is that we are going to just clean up this. Always want to mount your boards, this kind of make sure that nothing falls off. So that's gonna be mounted. And along with the Raspberry Pi, we will mount that. Um, interesting here that I noticed, I don't know if Ryan gave him this or if he made this, but this is just huge. This is a very big bulky um, split. Um, again, I don't know if he made it or if Ryan made it, but he does have the rocker switch. Uh, so he does have the basic you know, plug with the switch on it. I don't know if Ryan sent this like this, but geez, this thing is really like thick. Um, it's basically three, these are like commercial grade type of connectors here. Uh, basically we have power supply for the LEDs and then we have power supply for the Raspberry Pi. So I got everything I need, 100%. We're gonna take all this off. This is what definitely has to happen no matter what. And then we're just gonna restart. So just wanted to show you guys real quick the before and then i'll cut back to the after all right guys so again we are just basically dismantling it i figure you know i like to entertain but also educate a uh, big thing is that when you are taking off wires you don't want to just go like this you don't want to just yank it as you can see i'm putting a lot of pressure on this entire button so you definitely want to do it where you kind of have to at least take it out always use either needle nose pliers make sure you don't splice the wire you always want to use a tool to pull this wire out. If you just kind of yank it out, you might yank out the actual wire. The other big thing is, again, you don't want to yank it out with the button in because it's a little tiny plastic piece that is basically holding the button in. See, if I go like this, I might break the little tiny piece that holds the button in. So yes, you have to remove every single button Yes, I am removing every single wire. It just makes things a lot easier instead of just trying to work around it and all that. So again, whenever you are working with buttons, you always wanna take the button out nice and slow, make sure you're not splicing it. I'm using a splicer. You might wanna use an actual needle nose plier and you just pull it out just like that. Oh, see that? So again, you don't wanna just go like this. You don't wanna just yank these out because I'm adding a lot of force 
And basically I could break the button like that. Game Room Solutions used to at least sometimes give you extra buttons, one or two. I don't know if they do that still, but you might as well be safe. And instead of having a nightmare of breaking a button, just take the time to take it out, grab some pliers and remove. Usually it's good to kind of take the plastic piece away. Always aim for the actual metal and pull just like that. I kind of grip it in between my fingers and boom. So using my thumb to push off. We, lay, we basically have all the wires removed now. All right, so again, completely wireless buttons are fresh. I will untangle this, but I did notice a couple things while I was doing it. A lot of people get this stuff mixed up. Um, so figure this as a tutorial to help you guys. Real quick, just take a look at how these buttons are mounted. Again, we're not making fun of anybody. We're just here to help any way we can. You don't wanna do this. You always wanna to aim to have everything uniformed. You don't want just random buttons left and right. It stresses out the wires and it just doesn't make them add up. So basically what I do is that I always make these in the same direction, this way it's easy to run. So right now we basically have to start loosening um, button nuts and basically fixing them. So now we got all the buttons basically aligned. I kind of go on a diagonal. I follow the diagonal here. Big things that you want to make sure like see here, button five has a clear passageway as far as connecting. Same thing here with button four. So nothing really gets in the way. Kept these straight up. You don't want to point these down or else they kind of bend um, hitting the back door. So we always keep it up. I'm gonna mount the Zinmo here. It's always important to mount your Zinmo and then start wiring. All right, so now we got Zinmo mounted. I have a little bit of plastic basically behind it. Usually you should put standoffs. I don't have standoffs, but any little piece of styrofoam behind it should be good. Now, the big thing that I always see whenever I get customers control panels that they never do this right, you should always leave the grounds according to the player. Uh, basically on this one here, uh, Rob, just daisy chained all the grounds all together so that means player one ground was also connected to player two you never want to do that that's why there's two pairs so we're going to do player one grounds is going to include obviously the six buttons for player one the joystick coin and start and i always do the four admin buttons all connected to player one player two is just basically the six buttons joystick coin and start nothing else so player one Basically, if you think about it as six, that's 10, 12, 13 grounds connected to player one. Meanwhile, player two only has nine, six, eight, and nine. Always wanna be sure to do that. This way in case, you know, player one goes out, let's say no buttons work on player one, you could automatically assume it's a ground issue. Whereas the way it was wired before, if player one ground was unplugged, the whole control panel would just not work. So always try to get in the habit of keeping the grounds always separated. Now for me, I always do grounds first. I knock those out because of the daisy chain. And then I finish with basically the inputs. I shouldn't say finish. Next up is the inputs. And then I finish with the LEDs. Big thing to your mind with the Zinmo, I have a downwards. This way there's no stress on the USB wire. It'll be basically stapled here and then going into the Pi. With the downwards, player one is here now. So it's easy wiring and player two is right here. So now we got basically all the grounds connected. Notice real quick, no skips. So directly here, I go into button one and then I kind of do a Z pattern on that. Only one skip here, that's for the joystick. Always let the joystick be its own. And as you can see, when you do line up your buttons, you will never need a skip going here so this one had an extra pin lying here so no never really want to cut off grounds you could either cut them off or let them hang no need to worry and again as you can see with player two again ground going right on into button one two three four five and so on again no skips here this really goes from button three button three into the coin and the start and basically i'm going to take one of these and put it to the joystick. Now I could get ready to wire up inputs. I always use these four pins first 
all the time. If you think about it, four pin is right here. And then four pin for five, six, coin and start. And then another four pin just for that. All right, and now we got the wiring done. I try not to use too much electrical tape just in case of the event that you have to actually unwire stuff. Only two or three mags. I always leave the joystick controls on its own bundle. Um, he did have a lot of electrical tape, um, basically got rid of it. Always utilize the plastic on these. So you never have to electrical tape these because the plastic is big enough to hide all the wires. So again, nice and clean. Now we're gonna get ready with the LEDs. And now last but not least, we do have the LED wiring in. So again, it always kind of messes up the beauty of it, but LED wiring is over the regular input. So some people like to do LEDs first and then the inputs, which you could do, because this could be basically flat down. But as of right now, we are all good to go. That yellow, um, it keeps flickering. It looks like the um, prongs on the inside are a little loose. So I'm gonna have to just fix that for him. All right, so we got test bench up. It looks like we ran into a snag. Brand new SD card flashed. Doesn't boot. Looks like our Raspberry Pi is possibly toast. Basically you're gonna put it on. The big thing is that you should see green flashes. Again, I just flashed this SD card. It's brand new. I'm gonna have to grab a Pi and test it, but this Raspberry Pi seems to be dead. Well guys, there you guys have it, kind of a rough way to end the night. Pi's dead, I don't have any backup Pi, so we gotta order one on Amazon. But at least for now, control panel rewired, ready to go. SD programming takes me about maybe 45 minutes to an hour. And I do have also two wireless PS3 controllers for this, so. We are at a standstill. I'll see you guys on the next video for this.